What's going on guys? This is JJ Wilson. Now I'm going to come back with you with the uh, epilogue review and also analysis uh, about the couples that I read on this comic. Uh, Ryu X Chun-Li, The Heart of Battle. Excuse me. Ryu X Chun-Li, The Heart of Battle. And let's begin with the epilogue. So we got Ryu and Chun-Li, they're trained together. And they just finished their training because, you know, they have to keep their skills up because you never know what bad guys may challenge them. And then we see another familiar face in, from the Street Fighter 3 series, Oro. I hope that I said that right, Oro. Not Oreo, but Oro. <laughs> but anyway, he comes in there and he's checking up on Ryu because he was training Ryu for a little while before, uh, for whatever reason, Ryu decided to leave and take, take some time off from training with Oreo. <laughs> Oro. Anyway, uh, Oro was like, I take my eyes off you for several months, and now next thing you know, you're married? What's up with this? And Rhea's like, Oh, it's you, old man. Uh, what do you want? Oro's like, Well, most guys would give up their left arm to marry Chun Li, a woman like that. And then he's thinking, mm, I wouldn't mind uh, letting go of my left arm and unbinding it so I could hold her with both arms. <laughs> So that was the funny part there. And Ryu was like, well, part of the reason why I married her is because of you, actually. I was like, huh? Because of me? He's like, yeah. You know, guys like yourself, Master Gen, and also Akuma, or Goki, they, they train their entire lives trying to be the best. You know, trying to be the best warrior they could possibly be. But they were never satisfied. They were never happy. And I didn't really want that anymore. I thought I did, but I didn't want it anymore. And since now you're still trying to keep tabs on me, you know, you keep following me around hoping that one day I can become a big challenge for you so you, so you can uh, alleviate your boredom. But then what's going to happen after that? What if you beat me? Then you're going to be bored again. You're going you're gonna to be in the same place you were before. You're going to be in the same situation. And I was like, well, I don't kill anybody. And Rhea's like, well, that doesn't matter. The point is I want to start my own family. I want to start something more than just fighting. You can still be a warrior and have a life too. You can have a different way of life. And some of the best times I ever had in my life was with my master and Ken. We shared a lot of great memories together. And now I want to do the same with this family and also my my love of my life, Chun Li. I want to do the same thing for them. And I was like, well, okay. There's no sense in trying to convince you to come back to me and and make you train a thousand times more than we already have. So I'll just leave you two alone. And of course, Chun Li comes in and say, "Yeah, the same thing goes for me as well." And then Oro tried uh, the before he said goodbye. Um, he was a little inside. Well, you two are the greatest couple on earth. You're the most powerful, strongest couple on earth. So you you know guys are gonna come at you. So you gotta be ready. And Ryu and Chun Li smile like we know. <laughs> it's like, doy, it's obvious. And so later on that day, that night. Ryu comes in their bedroom, Chun Li is looking at on her computer, her laptop, and she has bison up there. And he's like, Hey, what are you looking at? Uh, that looks like bison. And it's like, Yeah, I'm just reading up uh on bison again. And I had the weirdest dream. Because I've had these thoughts in my head ever since I combined my mind was linked with Rose's mind. When she felt my love for you, Ryu, she also felt I also felt her love really of life itself you know and <clears throat> and what I discovered was something very fascinating and it may very well be related to bison so it turns out but back then bison had a family of his own he had a mother and a father and he had a little sister who he called baby doll and so he made sure he, he took great care of her and he was basically her shadow so wherever she went he was there to protect her at all times until there was a house fire one night and she got caught up in it and there was no way bison wasn't there at the time i don't think but when he came back he noticed that uh his sister had already passed away from the fire and uh he later discovered that his own father set the fire and he went to ask him why he did that and he ended up getting shot and so now he's laying there, and i think his father dumped him out somewhere left left him for dead and next thing you know bison is trying to <coughs> Bison actually does live from that. He he lives uh, from taking that gunshot to the chest. 
and I guess this is where his psycho power began to manifest itself because that's what ended up saving his life either that or he he, he summoned some demon to come revive his body or whatever a la Kazi Mishima <laughs> but anyway uh, from there he makes a I don't know if he got revenge on his father or not he probably did but he he later studies other martial arts he, and mainly Muay Thai he goes to Thailand he learns a a military style martial art called Ledrit. I hope I said that like or Lerdrit. And he masters that fight style along with several others and he increases his soccer power and next thing you know he, he establishes his own underworld criminal organization called Shalu. And you see the logo down there. And Ryu was like, Wow, that's a uh that's that's something else. But then later on we see uh that you know over time because bison wanted to get so strong he wanted to become so dark uh, he wanted to get rid of all the goodness inside of him so in order to do that he uh he had used his psycho power to purge away all the goodness within the soul and the memory in of that soul was so great that it, it turned into a body it turned into a female version of his sister however that body you know being bison's younger sister she doesn't know that she and bison are related she has no uh memories of her past so she's just existing but she does know that bison she came out of bison and, and that's her mortal enemy because that's her dark side vice versa with bison you know hating against rose being that's his good side so i hope i hope i didn't confuse anybody so just rewind so you get a better understanding or read the comic but yeah after hearing all that Rio was like man that's some crazy dream you got there chun lee do you have a feeling he's gonna come back and Chun is like, well, I sure hope not. And then the last two pages was interesting. Uh, we have Goki or Akuma, and uh, he's in another. He's like in a temple of sorts, and he's discovered that he's alive again, and he thought he was about to die. He's like, what the? What happened to me? Uh, I had a hole punched in my chest, and then my heart was ripped off, and I'm alive again. How'd this happen? And then we see this character, and I'm not familiar with this character, but I, I remember her name, Ingrid. And she introduces herself to Akuma, and she, and she was like, Yeah, uh, before you decide to go to the underworld, I, I pulled your body, your physical body, as well as your spiritual body. And I was able to save you from going to the other side, going into the afterlife. So here you are. The reason why I did that is because your son, Ryu, and my daughter Chun Li are married now, and I, I predict they're going to have an offspring. And this could either be a good thing or this could be a bad thing. Either it's going to destroy the world or it's going to save the world. So you and I need to team up, and we need to uh, we need to have a real long talk here. And that's pretty much the end of the epilogue, <laughs> which I thought was very, uh, very, very interesting. It looks like it was a really good setup for possibly another sequel. Uh, from the writers themselves, or I guess the head writer, who came up with this idea. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. If, if that's ever going to come into fruition, I man, I had no idea that uh, Ingrid could be the mother of Chun Li. I'm not sure how that happened. Maybe she took over a, a body of a physical another person, and I, I don't know. They have to explain that to me. <laughs> now, I want to talk about the couples. Uh. Of course, uh, my introduction video, I already gave a synopsis as to why I felt uh, that Ryu and Chun-Li made a lot of sense. Well, obviously starting off with Chun-Li being one of the more stronger females in the game and Ryu being one of the stronger, if not the strongest male character. And they're all, both of them are the most iconic characters in this whole game. Like, you can't play a Street Fighter game and I know who these two are unless you just never buy the play. But yeah, you know, after reading this comic, man, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. They both had masters. They both got taught by some of the world's greatest masters who pretty much treat them like family or like, you know, their children in a sense. And what's interesting with Chun-Li in this case, I, I remember reading a fan fiction story that she was actually adopted too. And she, was, she wasn't even from China. Like, she was, she was Chinese descent, but she was uh, born in Malaysia. I hope, I don't know where I read that story from. It was years ago. But that could make it more common with Ryu also being an orphan, you know, being raised by a Goken, which we, you know, if you, 
But on the flip side, Ryu being the son of Akuma, I know where they got the idea from. They they watched that movie, uh, Street Fighter Generations. They watched that movie with uh, Goki, Akuma, you know, training together with Goken as uh, younger students uh, under their master. And uh, somewhere in the long line, Akuma impregnated, uh, I guess, the master's daughter. <laughs> somewhere along the line, she was staying there too, but she wasn't trained to be a fighter. She was just there. And I guess they fell in love and they ended up having a baby. I wish I remember that woman's name. I think it was Sayuko. I can't remember. It's been a while since I watched that movie, but I totally understand the concept of Ryu being the son of Akuma. They got it from that movie. I'm pretty positive on that. And on the flip side, Chun Li possibly being an orphan to Dorai makes sense too, since I read a tale about that years ago. I wish I could pull it up. It may not be on the internet anymore, but it, it made it made for a very interesting angle as far as her character character development goes. I mean, those are some good reasons as to why I felt like they, they should be together, too. Uh, can I think of any more? Um, other than the fact that they're a similar age. And uh, the fact that they both have a strong sense of justice, even though it's more so with Chun-Li because she, she actually has a job. She she works for a living. Whereas Ryu, he's just doing it to, to make himself a better person, as well as being a better martial artist. Even though he has that dark side. Of course, thanks to Akuma being his father. <laughs> Excuse me. Now I want to talk about the other couples that I saw on there. Uh, I'm going to start off with the one that, that kind of took me by surprise. But as I read their little tale as to how they hooked up. Okay, now I was like, alright, I don't mind this couple. Uh, Sakura and Sean. Now, yeah, I didn't mind this couple, actually. It actually it's actually pretty good because it makes sense. Like... You know, Sean being Ken's first disciple and Sakura being Ryu's first disciple. And I like, I love the fact that they, they, they include that Sakura had already learned as much as she could from Ryu, even though there was still a lot to learn from Ryu. But then Ryu was like, okay, you can go ahead and train with Ken now, since I'm still trying to deal with this Satsui no Hado. You can't really be near me when I'm, at, when I'm pissed off. You can't get near me when I'm angry. So you need to train with Ken so he can stay safe and be away from me. So she's over there with Ken. They're training with uh, Sean, and she, <laughs> man, I feel bad for Sean. He was getting his butt kicked every time they sparred, and she got fed up about that because she, at this point in time, she didn't feel like she was learning nothing. And so now she's going, she's about to fly off somewhere, and the next thing you know, Sean's like, "No, please teach me, Sakura. I can learn so much more from you." And it's like Sakura's like, "No, I don't feel like it. I don't want to." And then all of a sudden, she's at that moment, she sounded just like Ryu. That, that hit her like a. Uh, a tow truck hitting a brick brick wall you know a tow truck hitting a brick wall that when she realized that it's like holy crap now I sound just like Ryu when he told me he didn't want me to be around him for training so it just made a lot of sense there man I, I was like that was great that was brilliant so uh, from there they, they started training together she started teaching him more about how she learned the Hadouken and all that and then you know when he got into the national tournament I guess the American tournament he ended up winning and because of that, he thanked Sakura, and then that's how they hooked up. They fell in love. Because Sean finally became the man that Sakura admired, you know, because he got so much better at fighting, and he never gave up on his dreams. So I, so when I saw that, I was like, okay, yeah, I, I feel this couple now. That makes sense. Now it makes sense. It's just too bad they didn't put Sean on Street Fighter Five, man. Instead, they put his sister. So I wonder what uh, Laura Matsuda would approve of this relationship. I'm sure she wouldn't mind. And then on the flip side, Karen, I forget her last name, uh, the other chick, the rich girl, uh, Sakura's rival, other rival. I'm pretty sure she probably, she, well, she might be pissed off, actually. She might not be happy about this. She probably hate the idea of Sakura getting married before her. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the next one I saw was Alex and Ibuki. I saw this one pop up several times throughout the comic. Well, not just in the comic, but on the, uh, on the fan arts as well. I'm not sure how to feel about that one because there's really I mean unless Alex like straight up came to Ibuki and he was and he was checking her out real good and stuff like that because we know the whole time Ibuki was going in them terms just to look for a boyfriend and yeah Alex wouldn't be a bad canon just because of how muscular and how masculine he is and things like that the story that they made for that couple yeah it was good it was a good story but uh I was gonna say 
Yeah, I like how they tied in that, you know, they happened to bump into each other by chance because Ibuki didn't really want to hurt the guy. And it was the same way with him, but Alex. And then later on, uh, she was on another mission and he was around to save her life. And then that's that's when she started to have feelings for him. And then her next mission was to fight Gil. And uh, they were trying to, and I think she fought Gil first and she ended up losing only to Alex to come in and sacrifice himself for her. And so, how did they escape from that fight from Gil anyway? How did they get away from that? I'm not even sure how they did that, but uh, she got out of the way from that somehow and she started having nightmares about it. She was starting thinking about uh, some of Alex's close friends and family, mainly Patricia and Tom. And they're about to kill her because they they, they called her all kind of derogatory names and they, they were so upset that they would let that she would let Alex get messed up like that. But it was all a dream and you know Alex is trying to com console her. It's like hey you know you're not like that. I know my friends wouldn't say those things to you if they really saw for what you were. They they know that you're a kind and gentle-hearted girl. And so I mean yeah it it makes sense. But I was like with Ibuki in particular you know. I, I guess in the series she got she hooked up with Rolento and Guy, especially Guy, because Guy doesn't have any uh, disciples. Guy's just training like he's in America with Cody. But I always thought she somehow they I don't want to say they would hook up, but somehow through Guy she would find somebody similar to her feelings. Like he probably does ninjutsu, but he doesn't really care for it like her. I thought that would kind of, that would be either she hooks up with another ninja. Or she hooks up a guy, but I guess hooking up with Alex ain't too bad either, because after all, her whole status of being there is to be with a, a final boyfriend. So, this is whatever with me with Alex and Ibuki. The next one I saw that uh, was definitely implied was Rose and Jury. <laughs> Jury Han and Rose. I didn't see that one coming. Now, actually, speaking of Guy, several times in the Alpha series, he's, he saved Rose from uh, the clutches of bison now that would have made for a juicy couple right there that Rose and Guy would have made for a juicy couple but in this story she she goes full lesbo mode for a uh, jury you know especially after she saved her life you know from uh, from bison's clutches well she didn't really save her life but she she took her away and she she helped her get back to normal but yeah I'm, I'm kind of uh I guess I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm really having a problem with it. I guess Jerry need to hook up with somebody. <laughs> I don't know who could ha I don't know what male could handle Jerry, man. I mean, with the Feng Shui engine or without it, she might be just as crazy without the Feng Shui. I mean, if she was just normal, she'd probably be just as bonkers and off the wall herself. I mean, <laughs> like, good luck trying to control Jerry. Good luck with that. But yeah, I, it makes for an interesting angle, you know, with Rose and Jerry being a, a same-sex couple. It was certainly made for plenty of Kodak moments. But anyway, uh, what was the next one I saw? Oh, later I saw DJ hook up with Elena. Now, actually with Elena, I thought she was going to... In that game, I would have assumed that she would hook up with Sean. I would assume that she would hook up with Sean some, some kind of way. But since they were both in the game and stuff like that but you know with with Sean hooking up with Sakura I mean it actually makes for a better and more interesting relationship so I guess I have to X that out and um DJ yeah DJ needs some love for real <laughs> now DJ is all about singing and having a good time and yet we never nobody really bothers to talk about what his his possible mate could be <laughs> so I guess yeah Elena would be a good candidate you know since she's pretty much into everything and everybody <laughs> And the next one I saw was uh, on that list was very peculiar. Dudley and Cammy. Dudley and Cammy. I didn't see any artwork for Dudley and Cammy, but it was definitely implied on that list that I saw on that one picture. Like, there's nowhere. The only commonality with those two is that they're they're both British. They're both from Britain. You know that that's the only commonality that I, I see there. And uh, there's nowhere like. In the series, I haven't read any fan fiction regarding Dudley even hooking up with Cammy. So I thought that was more that was more, that was the scratch my head type moment there with that couple. Cause I, I even I didn't think about that. I was like, where would Dudley date? <laughs> what would Cammy hook up with? 
Let's see, were there any more that I saw? Not really. Uh, as far as Cammy, I, I thought maybe she would hook up possibly with Abel. Since I think in Street Fighter 4 they did have a scene together, I think. I can't really remember. I may have to look it up later. And it kind of would make sense because they both suffer from him. They, her and Abel both suffer from amnesia. That probably would make a little bit more sense because that's the big thing they have in common. Is that they can't really remember their past. They can't remember who they are. So I, I thought that couple would make a little bit more sense. Let's see, were there any other couples that I saw in there that they were trying to imply? Oh, Zangief and Rainbow Mika. Well, that's obvious. <laughs> but see, the problem with that is that's like the same angle with the Ryu and Sakura. You know, Rainbow Mika being a stand of uh, Zangief and Sakura being a stand of Ryu. But uh, I guess that makes a little more sense since they both love wrestling and and uh, Rainbow Mika is of age, obviously. And then Zangief being as old as he is, he needs a spouse for real bad. So yeah, what other person could you have on the Street Fighter universe than Rainbow Mika? On the flip side, yeah. I mean, I I've seen plenty of stories of Ryu and Sakura in it. However, I mean, Sakura is in school. Ryu is not in school. There's a considerable age gap between the two, much like the Zangief Rainbow Mika. However, uh, I feel like if you bring Ryu and Sakura into the picture, like... This is another thing I talked about with the author. Like, we're always going to remember Sakura as that schoolgirl. We're not going to remember her as a grown woman. We're always going to remember Sakura as that nice, cheerful, perky schoolgirl. And Ryu is this calm, serious dude. And he's he's all about make, trying to make himself better. And he's he's not always about playfulness and things like that. So you bring those two opposites into the equation. That's going to make for a pretty rocky relationship. So you need a more mature mind in Chun-Li to kind of tame Ryu. Both both like in life as well as in battle so that's why that's part of that's another reason why I do support a Ryu Chun-Li romance in the Street Fighter world but uh that's all I got with that I really enjoyed the comic uh, between Ryu and Chun-Li the heart of battle I'll put the link in the description box for the website and the book I, I've done that in my other reviews anyway so you guys tell me what you thought about the comic as a whole and uh, see if I left anything out. I pretty much covered all bases. I hope I did anyway. And uh, that's it. Okay, before I go, uh, there, I'm going to send a special shout out to these two gentlemen, uh, Michael Huey and Sergio Brazino. They have a Patreon page called TreeInc.com. And from the looks of it, they have drawn several pictures of Street Fighter characters as well as some other famous games. So if you want to help those guys out, you know, with donations or just sending them um, requests and things like that, go check out the page. I'll post the link in the description box as well. So check those guys out. It's called Tree Inc. Well, anyway, that's everything. So take care, guys.